All right, we're in Houston, Texas, and historic, legendary production god to the stars, Tim Guthy, man. He's worked for some legendary acts, most notably No Effects. Sure. Everything else on the punk rock world that's ever played Warp Tour, Timmy's gotten a paycheck from and shared a bunk with at some point on some bus. Oh, yeah. It's all started with punk rock. So tonight we're in Houston. We're in Houston, Texas. And you were out with a band called Straight No, no Chaser. Chaser. A little bit different than punk rock, but a high production show. High production show, nice guys, uh, but you know, it's just another gig. Just Back on the tour bus. How'd you get your start in the business? How did how'd you find your way on the bus in the first show, first tour? First tour that I, in my whole life? Yeah, how did it happen? I started a punk band when I was a kid, 15 years old. That's uh, how we, we put out a record when I was 15 years old. And, uh, and the name of the band for the kids out there that, that might want to try and find it online? You can find it online, it's called The Grim. We actually have a new record coming out next year. The Grim? Do you guys still play? We still play. Nice. And we just played a show with Pulley, Scott Radinsky's band, the other night. Nice. So between working From with Dodgers Hall of Fame relievers. Yep. Who's so also brothers of a really big tech from Lagwagon, one of our favorite no, guys. And no effects. Yeah. But uh, anyways, uh, yeah, I started, I started the band. And, you know, we started playing with no effects and bad religion, and that's how it all started. But I owned my own van. Uh, the bands all started asking me to use my van. And that's how it led into one thing to another. I mean, I toured consistently with those guys from 1991 to 2005. So having a hot, uh, a working van is like better than having a hot girlfriend. Yes, but eventually it led to the tour bus, to the planes, to the everything, to the world, and I got to go everywhere. And some of the other bands you've worked for? Uh, Bad Religion, No Effects were the two bands that I mainly toured with, and I've uh, done some other tours in metal, but besides that, uh, I work for Dan Steinberg now for the last uh, five, six years now, I think. And uh, he's brought me back to the tour bus today. I haven't been on the tour bus in a few years. It's straight no chaser. Okay, so we're in we're in Houston. Last night you were in Tulsa, Oklahoma. I like that you had to think about that the night before. Albuquerque. Okay, and you came from Grand Rapids, right? Grand Rapids before that. And, and then, then Dallas, Dallas tomorrow, right? Then Dallas tomorrow, and then we uh, head on home. So when you're on a tour like this, you're in all of these cities, but you're working, so you're not really experiencing too much of the city, I take it. No, not at all. I mean, yesterday I got to, there's a famous club in Tulsa, Oklahoma that I've been to a few times. It's like one of the first places the Sex Pistols ever played. You know, What's the name of the club? Uh, Kane's Ballroom. Oh, Kane's. And it was right next door to the venue, so I walked over there and took a look. Cool. But uh, no, I don't get to see them. It's Groundhog Day, and we start, at 8 a.m., 9 a.m., load in, and we go till midnight. So it's a full, long day, and we're taking care of the band, and taking care of my friend Dan, and we're getting through the day. But it, it's it's Groundhog Day on tour, though. I'm getting used to it again. It's the same thing every single day. Well, there's a certain uh, vibe you get back into on the bus, like pretty quick, right? That yeah, you know, you learn the vibe, like who who gets up early, who gets up late, who you need to be respectful of because they're sleeping. Yeah. Weird to be back in the, the coffins, as I call them, the bunks. This band keeps it very, very cold in there. But uh, yeah, it's, it's good for the voice. It's good. It's been great, you know. I love working with Corby, their tour manager, and uh, I've definitely building a relationship with some new friends here, and I, they've made me feel comfortable. Excellent. So your hope tonight is that you get to get on the bus and be done with the day by what time? Uh. We'll probably be done. We usually been done with the day every day around midnight. Nice. About midnight every night, and then we get on to the next city, and we just keep doing it. So, little insight to people that want to like get experience of the road. What happens on the bus? And I'm not talking about the girls. Like, you're on the road. The bus is moving. What? And a working band that's used to being on the road. It, you know, not a party on the road. Not that special case. The real after the show. What's going on on the bus? Uh, relaxing. Sleep. The wind down? Winding down. Uh, the band members are eating, they're playing video games. Relaxing. Winding down with lots of sleep, especially when you're working the long days like this. Okay. But, you know, when we were growing up, when we were in the van, it was a different story. It was more about the party and fun and drinking beers after. And, but when you're on shows like this, these are bigger productions. And, 
early load ins and you gotta be you gotta get your rest. If you don't get your rest, you get sick. And some shout outs to uh, some of your favorite people that you gave you your start in the industry. Who who can you uh who you wanna give a shout out to? Who gave me my start? Plus some of your favorite people that helped you along. Oh, I, I would definitely say uh the person that taught me how to settle shows was probably uh, Stormy Shepherd. Shout out to Stormy, Leave Home Booking. Uh, a little shout out to Will Anderson, just an old friend of ours. In Arizona Miami. for the Corey Adams days, onto yeah. the Tom LaPena days. Now onto his own, like running his own shop days. We, we definitely learned a lot from that, from the Corey Adams days. And you know, even down to Kent Jameson, he uh, he taught me no a lot. No effects his agent. And He's their sound man. And, uh, Kent taught me a lot. We were a good team together. We he's the agent too now though, right? He books the dates? Yeah, he's the agent. He's the sound man and the tour manager. Just getting it all done. A lot, a lot of hats. But that, I mean, that's where it all started. And then a, a shout out to you, Dan. Oh. You've taught me a lot too. Every day we keep learning to do better. But, and then we learn how to fuck up in new ways. Yes. But we admit our fuck ups. And uh, for the, those of you that realize that the road changes, Timmy's been off the road for quite a bit for the most part. Now due to the fact that he's got a little one at home. Very yes. exciting. Claire but Grace McDuffie. A reason to want to be at home. Yeah. Definitely. Not to mention you got a hot wife at home too, and there's clearly yeah. another reason to not want to be on the road. Hot young wife. <laughs> no, uh, I, I don't mind going out on the road. I, you know, once in a while I'll get calls from other guys, but I think the last tour I did was 2011, maybe? I went out with, on a metal tour with Cradle of Filth. Just horrible music. Sorry, you guys, but, you know, it was a, it was a job. I'd rather be at home, yes, Dan. I'd definitely rather be at home, get in my car, go run your shows for you, and then when I don't do that, I go work on movie sets and commercials. So, what do you listen to when you're at home if you're not listening to Cradle of Filth? What, what do you listen oh, to for fun? I will never listen to Cradle of Filth. What do you listen to for fun? You guys don't want to know what I listen to anymore. I get enough from my band still on the side. That's my punk rock and my outlet these days. But I, I listen to a lot of 70s rock. Very nice. That's what I listen to. Not too, I listen to punk rock once in a while. I was out with uh, Gary Tovar the other night and I saw the Subhumans from England. Legendary promoter who started Golden Voice. Shout out to Gary Tovar. We love Gary. Good guy. I love get my Gary. punk rock in once in a while. But it's uh, it's about 70s rock that keeps me going during the day. Nice. I've had too much punk rock in my life. All right, well, we're coming to you from Houston, Texas, November 11th, Straight 2015, no on the Straight No Chaser Tour, downstairs in the backstage area in catering with Tim McDuffie. It's been great. Thanks for taking the time to talk to us, Tim. Thank you, Danny.